I've struggled immensely throughout my life with keeping on top of chores and very basic things. For some reason, most of these chores and small little things would feel like mountainous tasks to me, like just very difficult to conquer. One of the main problems that I would have was the cleanliness of my room. My room would be an absolute dump. I would have clothes all over the floor. I would have pizza boxes everywhere. Clutter everywhere as well, just shit which I don't even use and I don't even like and it's still just sat there in my room just taking up space, gathering dust, <laughs> literally gathering dust. And your go-to instinct might be that, you know, oh, teenage boys, am I right, guys? Oh, teenage boys are so messy with their rooms and they're so fucking content living in filth, <laughs> writhing in their own filth like fucking pigs. Oh, those teenage boys. Oh, fuck's sake. And to that, I would say, yes, to some extent, boys are typically a bit more messy than girls. However, it's really, really easy for living like a fucking pig to become normalized by falling back onto that stereotype. I don't think it should be normalized that boys should live like messy fucking animals and they've got shit all over their room and they don't make their bed and there's junk everywhere. They don't put their clothes away. I don't think that's an acceptable thing that should be normalized in society. It's not normal. It's not a good thing. It's not a good reflection upon yourself. How your room looks and how clean you are and how organized you are is is often a reflection of your own mental health. If your room's messy, I guarantee you that your head is also messy. The way your room looks, the way things are put away, the way it's organized, is a massive reflection on what goes on in your brain. If your room's messy, I bet you have lots of brain fog, a lack of mental clarity, and also probably pretty bad mental health. And the thing is, it's really easy to dismiss this video and the idea that your room is a reflection of your mental health because it seems insignificant, right? And it's really easy to just continue living the exact same way, like a pig in your really messy fucking environment and wonder why your mental health so bad and why you can't seem to get shit done. And you may be getting offended by me saying this because it sounds quite a lot like you and you might be thinking, Sam, don't be fucking stupid. My mental health isn't bad just because my room's untidy. That's really offensive. But it doesn't make what I'm saying any less true. And I know for a fact that the psychologist Jordan B. Peterson gets a lot of shit for this idea. This is one of his main talking points which is ridiculed by the Twitter Andes because they just dismiss it as unimportant. It's very easy to look at something like this and just label it as insignificant, which is why it's always used as a weapon against Jordan B. Peterson, because motherfuckers just want a reason to dislike him. And it's a really easy thing to point at and just be like, oh, look how stupid that idea is. But it doesn't make it any less true. No matter how silly or insignificant you might find it, you're wrong. It's very significant. Your environment is everything. If you want to get shit done, you need a good environment for it. If your environment isn't set up for you to get shit done, you're not going to get shit done. No hyperproductive top 1% man is working in a fucking dump. They've intricately set up their environment for their success. And this includes cleanliness. This includes throwing clutter away. It includes making your bed. How could you possibly respect yourself and also demand respect from other people if you're living like a fucking pig. You're not going to. No one's going to take you seriously. Something which my friend said to me back in Thailand, uh, CEO of Testosterone, absolute top G, is basically me and Hamza were kind of living very messy. We're both very inclined naturally to just be incredibly untidy and it doesn't come naturally to us that when we make a mess we should like immediately tidy it up. So we ended up getting quite a lot of mess sort of mounted up and anytime CEO of Testosterone or Jack would come over he would see this mess and he would literally <laughs> he'd literally fucking start cleaning it up because what would happen is he used to come round to work with us at our villa and we would all sort of just be grinding away at our own things. And me and Hamza were like quite content with working amongst this filth. And Jack wasn't. And something he said to me which really stuck was, you have to be that alpha in all areas of your life. And that includes 
fucking cleaning. And if you're not going to clean yourself, then pay someone else to clean for you. Just make sure your environment's fucking clean. I don't care how you do it. Just make sure it's clean. And when he said that, that you need to be an alpha in all aspects of your life, that really fucking clicked with me. Because being clean and like cleanliness, it's not exactly associated with being a man, typically, is it? Men are typically like fucking, oh, just get, get it done and fucking thrive in your own filth. And <laughs> But it's fucking true. Like, no... 1% man, no man who is successful, who has a name for himself, is working amongst fucking filth. That man is either cleaning up after himself, or he's paying someone else to clean up for him, or he's got a wonderful wife who's doing it for him. So how do we fix this? How do we fix um, our uncleanliness? Because it was a really big problem for me, and I knew actively that it was really bad for me and my mental health, that I was in an environment so messy and so cluttered. But I couldn't really seem to do anything about it. I've came up with two approaches that you can go with, uh, depending on the situation that you're in. So approach one is quite simply just fucking clean up. Force yourself to clean up after yourself. Take a half a day right now to literally deep clean your environment, deep clean your room. And then once you've set it up for success, clean up after yourself every time you make a mess. Or allow yourself half an hour at the end of every day to just make sure everything's all clean clean and tidy. Whatever works for you. But the gist is, just fucking clean up. Force yourself to clean up. This approach is for people who are just kind of lazy. They have momentum going in other areas. I've got good shit going for them there hitting the gym really hard. They're doing good amounts of work. So it's not really as much of a problem of mental health. It's more just laziness. Stop being lazy and clean up after yourself. That's approach one. Pretty fucking simple, right? Now approach two would apply to how I saw myself about three months ago. I felt so overwhelmed and my mental health was so kind of bad that I couldn't really even bring myself to do anything like that. I was very much so struggling. So approach number two is to basically move yourself away from the environment which is making you feel this way. Move yourself away and better your mental health. Move yourself away from the people, move yourself away from the environment for a while and with the intention of I'm going to come back a much better and changed man with better mental health. Put some intent behind it. This is what I did with Thailand. I went away to Thailand for two months because I felt incredibly overwhelmed. My mental health was suffering. I needed to get away from my environment, my mother, my friends. I needed to get away from all of that for a little while just so I could have a reset of my brain. So approach number two is basically move away and improve your mental health. If you can't move away, then you should really, really focus on working on your mental health. But for me, moving away was quite important because my environment and the people around me were actually making my mental health suffer. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's not really their fault, but I just needed some independence. I needed that time away. And I think that might benefit you as well if you find yourself in a similar situation. You don't have to be as extreme as me. You don't have to go 12 hours across the world on a plane for two months, but just move away from the environment for a while. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was inspiring. If you're not already, join the Discord. It's full of awesome people. Follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care, guys.